Doyle Brunson's wisdom today is, uh, <laughs> through the years, I've never stopped doing things, thinking about things, and I still think young. Yeah. So uh, you might think you know anything about carbon. You might think you know everything about bacteria. You might think you know everything about filter socks. Uh, but today, we, st we still don't know. We're definitely light years past where we were on many of these things uh, since uh, uh, 2015. Uh, trying to think young, trying to <laughs> never stop doing things, never stop thinking about things. Thanks for the inspiration, Doyle. All right. So uh, episode 23. All right. Cleanup crew, how many do I need? That was uh, 52 weeks of reefing, <laughs> uh, what we talked about way back 2015. Today, core belief? Core belief on cleanup crew, the C, un, uh, lowercase u, uppercase c, cuck, is <laughs> uh, a cleanup crew is so much more than snails and crabs. That's the core belief. Yeah. So much more than snails and crabs. If you believe what we believe, mm -hmm. uh, join us for the journey. Otherwise, if, if you think it's snails and crabs only, uh, check out because uh, there's nothing here for you. <laughs> uh, no, uh, cleanup crew is uh, so much more than snails and crabs. And yeah. I think we'll just dive right in, man. I mean, what matters most here? Number Big one. one. Big one. Go for it. This was the one that, uh, one that we picked up from WWC in like, we've always, we've kind of always done it, but then really put a, a name to it. Utilitarian fish, meaning uh, what matters most, a tang gang is the perfect cleanup crew, is the cleanup crew for most large algae. Mm -hmm. uh, from day one, uh, you put them in there before you kick your lights on uh, and then they help keep all the nasties at bay and then throughout the life of the tank, they're just there working because you know that's what the that's what they were intended to they were put on this earth to do is pick algae. Utilitarian fish, uh, fish that serve a purpose mm. and earn their living in the tank, right? So we've all seen it before. Uh, you've seen it in the wild. You've seen it in your tank. You know, tanks just pecking away all day long. That's all, all they day. do is eat algae off the of surfaces. Uh, <laughs> don't be surprised that if you take them out, all of a sudden you have an algae problem. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That was like one of those aha moments where like somebody just says it the right way. Tang gang, yep. utilitarian fish. Yep. Uh, well, that's what we put fish in here for. Yeah. Uh, it expands upon that. It's like mandarins going after parasitic copepods. Uh, it uh, is wrasses going after coral mm -hmm. pests. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, a lot of times if you can put these things in there beforehand. So utilitarian fish being, I got an Aptasia eating file fish. But I didn't wait until I saw 18 million of them in the tank and then expected him to somehow solve that problem. Right, right. What I did is I put it in there at the beginning. Prevention. Yeah. And so if he happened to stumble upon one, it was gone. Uh, and so I will never even know they're in there because they were eating them from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, same thing with like a, a lot of flatworms and things like that. You put one of those uh, wrasses in there. Um, probably why we saw, you know, nudie, uh, the emerge, the nudie eating, um, the Monty eating nudibranx in the 160. Uh, we saw the emerge of the acro eating flatworms in the 160 is because uh, we didn't even know they were there to begin with. But then all of a sudden, when you take that fish, that utilitarian fish out, when we catch the six line rest, when you pull the file fish out, the uh, file fish were eating the acro eating flatworms. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Explosion. So yep. they, a lot of times they're just taking care of the problem before you before you even know it's a problem. So in our case, uh, this tank we know full well has Monteita nudibranx in yep. it. We have uh, we know full well that uh, there is acridian flatworms in it. 100%. Uh, and if you look behind us, you can say, does it matter? I don't. I don't see where it's affecting a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, part of it is uh, the, you know the whole approach of the KZ approach of the uh, coral booster combined with the flatworm, uh, flatworm stop, stop mm -hmm. uh, hopefully making the tissue unpalatable and tough. Uh, but also combined with that, predators just swimming around all day, that's, man. Rats is just eating for. them, dude. Uh, yeah. Manually blowing them off and you know taking a little bit of care. Once they're in there, they're in there. There's not much you can do. I'd imagine that uh, the tang gang or utilitarian fish wasn't really imagined. Like when I first got into the hobby, and I'm reading every time I read, you know, the CUC, and they're like, all right, establish your cleanup crew, and it's uh, it's all part of the process of setting up a, a new tank. Uh, Nobody, uh, nobody said these things like tangs and, and fish, and those are part of your cleanup crew. Uh, and I don't know, it, this, that's probably what drew the parallel for me was when, WW, when we were in that four month cycle and they said, add fish that are going to help you out when you turn the lights on. And that's when it, it touched for me and says, oh, well then yeah, cleanup crew, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Because uh, most of the other advice you would get in the past was loaded up with snails and loaded up with crabs. 
And that was your cleanup crew. Here's the problem is, mm -hmm. is like snails and crabs can only get to certain areas. Like they're not crawling out in big peninsulas. And if they are, they're, you know, taking a nosedive. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's just like you see a snail and a crab, it just isn't is limited by where it can get to. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> the tang, though, is just swimming around all day long, you know, hung and pecking. All right. So uh, another one, what matters most is uh, copepods for micro algae. Right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can actually see in mic like in microscopic shots of them eating tiny little bits of uh, filamentous algae and stuff off of the rock, you know. So, uh, for me, I'm sold now all the way that on, on uh, pods. Pods, yeah. You probably want to wait until there is some food source for them to add uh, add them. I wouldn't put them in a tank uh, as a preventative measure because they'll probably just starve and right. die. Right, right, right. Uh, but you know, as soon as the tank's been up, the light's been on for a little bit, probably a good time to add them. And this only makes sense because it's like an army of tiny little bugs getting into places that your your tangs can't get that your snails and crabs can't get they're in that's where you know they primarily live in the Be in the rocks in the surface eat it before you ever even see it yeah. uh and on top of that they <laughs> will replicate very quickly in a reef aquarium uh meaning that uh, as long as they're not predators eating every last one of them uh, but in, in most rock structures today, that'd be hard to do. Right. Uh, uh, as long as they're uh, uh, are able to replicate, they will replicate based on the food source. Mm. So as much food as there is for them to eat, the faster they will grow <laughs> and take over the tank. So uh, copepods, uh, part of the cleanup crew, think about them in that manner. Uh, probably the best place to get them from my, my mind would be algae barm. But right. uh, we also haven't given up on crabs and snails. Those are part of the cleanup crew too. You think of like... Big picture to little picture to even smaller picture. So like tangs to snails and crabs to copepods. Uh, they're just taking care of a little something different. So like a lot of your detri uh, detritus and some of the algae. Uh, we believe they matter most as well. Mm -hmm. So detritus, they're walking around picking up everything that's on the ground, you know, in the sand, uh, picking Uneaten up sand. food. Uh, so snails and crabs do have a serpent purpose. But again, if, I, if I'm thinking about snails and crabs, like... A, they can't get around to the same place where the fishes can get, and uh, they also can't replicate in the same fashion uh, that uh, copepods do. So, like, you're kind of stuck with how many you have. Now, some snails do, uh, like a trochus snail will actually replicate itself in, in a uh, reef aquarium if you're lucky. Mm. Uh, you'll end up with lots of them. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, for the most part, though, I would put snails and crabs in terms of fighting algae and pests as, like, number three. Yeah, uh, which is the total opposite of they what I was told one. in the beginning. They were all that was all we was ever talked about when I first got in. Was, hey, your cleanup crew is snails and crabs. End of conversation. Mm -hmm. Here's places where you can get them in packages, but mm -hmm. the pack the cleanup crew packages from a lot of those places that were selling them didn't have these other factors in there: copepods, tangs, and you know a bunch of other stuff. So, I mean, I guess I feel the exact same way I do about crabs and snails as I did back then. I just feel better about utilitarian fish and, <laughs> and uh, copepods. copepods. So uh, I, I feel like the s snails and crabs are going to do about what I expected them to do back mm. then. Uh, I have more faith uh, in uh, the tang gang and uh, copepods. Sand sifters uh, being, uh, you know, cucumbers, sand sifting stars, yep. nasarius snails, uh, uh, sand sifting fish, diamond uh, gobies, diamondback yeah, gobies, yeah, things that do okay yeah. in a reef tank as long as there's enough food, uh, or that you supplement their food. Uh, those things do a pretty good job of turning over the sand. Uh, you know, like depends on how aggressive uh, the specific animal you get is uh, <laughs> and how many you have. But uh, in some cases, they could be the solution to keeping the sand clean mm. uh, or at least portions of it clean i mean taking the uh, taking away a lot of your own need for me or your time and effort and put into maintenance into vacuuming the sand and stuff like that if your detritus is constantly getting rolled over and exposed into the filtration and up and out uh that's just less of a you know ticking time bomb specifically in the sand that you might have yeah so Should like those disturbed little nasaria snares uh snails are a little <laughs> Little uh, like <laughs> snorkels, zombies. I call you them. Know, they come up out of the ground, out of the sand when yeah. there's food in the tank. Yeah, but they're just going around in the sand all day long, just cleaning the sand out, eating up the detritus mm. in there. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, the same thing with uh, your, you know, sand sifting diamondback goby. Just going around, sifting all this stuff out. 
And those fish tend to do best when there's a lot of waste in the tank, you know, so mm -hmm. that they can you know, pick up the waste food and stuff as they're going through it, as well as an established, uh, you know, sand. Uh, uh, they don't do as well with a brand new sand yeah. bed, but. I imagine, and we didn't hit it here, uh, but now that I'm thinking about it, I would imagine to some degree, not that it's uh, a, not that it's a pest that you want in your tank for cleanup crew, but bristle worms, I bet, to some degree are mm. in there digging up detritus, eating things like that, too. Yeah, I mean, so to those, some, sometimes to the point where they could just get out of control, but... Yeah. But people say that all the time, like, that bristle worm is just fine. It's just eating detritus and living mm. in there, doing its thing. Except uh, for when it's not. Yeah, you know, that, that's, like, generally true, but, like, also, it's a surefire way to, like, get stung all the time, too. So, <laughs> uh, they if can, they're in there, they're in there. But yeah. if I gave me an option, I would choose not in there. Yeah, me too. Uh, but I've, like, are I've, they terrible? No. No, I've had been stung, stung with some a few times, but I've seen them to uh, plague-like proportions, mm -hmm. like the drains where they're just falling out of the drains. There's videos oh. where it just give you nightmares. Yeah, like, you you nightmares. watch them. Yeah, so especially if you saw it all macro. <coughs> uh, all right, so another one, though, that people didn't think about as a cleanup crew uh, mm. is bacteria and biome for slimes. So slimes, I'm just using a generic right. term, like... You know, slimes on the rock being uh, like uh, cyano, dinos, uh, dinos mm. all of those things. Uh, well, you know what, man? There are absolutely tools for uh, the slimes that they like, will beat those things back. So uh, if you add biome, like things that live on the rock will protect their own, you know, yeah. essentially territory on the rock uh, and bacteria will eat up you know, cyano and those other things on the rock. All those bacteria are in competition with each other. If you can get the upper hand with a, a bacteria that helps you versus the other nasty ones, uh, then win-win. We're going to dive into bacteria even deeper here in a couple episodes later on. But uh, mm -hmm. yes, bacteria and biome. Yeah. Uh, Vibrant is uh, one of those ones that really came to mind from uh, for our testing this last couple, uh, last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on top of that, UV won't stop any of these things, but it'll slow the spread and give the uh, clean up, cleanup crew on many of them the upper hand. Yeah, right? a couple of days ago, we really dug into UV sterilizers and things like that, but uh, it's not the answer, but it sure can help your, C, you know, your CUC. Yeah, so think of CUC, uh, your cleanup crew now, I think in you know today's age, the new evolution, uh, I think most people that are really, really into this would agree, the statements we made here, that utilitarian fish for pests, uh, tang gang for uh, uh, mm -hmm. algae, you can prevent, not necessarily prevent that you'll ever see those uh, uh, pests like acridine flatworms or uh, the nudies or even the zoanthid nudies or yep. any of that stuff. Yep. You just might not even know they're in there because they're being eaten faster than they replicate yeah. or cause a problem. So uh, cleanup crew for pests, cleanup crew for algae, copepods for microalgae, crabs and snails for detritus and a bit of algae, sand sifting fish, mm -hmm. cucumbers, stars, nasarius snails, all that stuff for your sand, bacteria and biome for the slimes that can uh, go in your tank. UV, supportive, won't prevent it, but may give the upper hand to the cleaning up crew. So if you think about cleaning up crew, now keeping your tank and having organisms that live, uh, do work for a living, <laughs> those are all organisms that will do that for you. On different scales too, yeah. Yeah. from macro to micro. Uh, mm -hmm. They're working in all aspects of your tank. It just feels like even like when we say it aloud, like a little bit more of an intelligent approach instead of just using one hammer of crabs and snails. Yeah. Uh, something like really is trying to address what the issues are and then go tackle them using, uh, you know, live talk. Well, that leads into the hard lessons here because mm -hmm. I was a victim of the hard lesson of the first one. Uh, so hard lesson when it comes to cleanup crew, we don't want you to learn. We don't want you to learn on your own. Learn from uh, hard lessons. We have hundreds of dead crabs and snails don't help. So. I fell victim to this one, uh, actually a couple times. I was setting up my, uh, it was after my 40 breeder, I was upgrading to a 60, and uh, I was, uh, you know, clean up crew, clean up crew, clean up crew. And so I went on a buying spree and just, I was like, well, more is better. Uh, I just don't want algae and everything like that. So uh, let me buy a pack of like 20 or 30 snails and let me buy a, a pack of like uh, two dozen blue leg and red leg hermits and throw them all in there. This should never be my problem anymore until they start dying because there's a lack of food. You know, and so if you think about it, like, let's just pretend that uh, I threw a hundred snails in a tank that we knew full well beforehand were dead. 
it's a just giant nutrient bomb, mm. right? Yeah, so, yeah. Like the, but like it doesn't really matter though if it died today or it died uh, you know, over the course of the next couple of weeks as they starve out. Uh, it really doesn't matter which one of those things is true. It, it's going to have the same net effect in a month. Right. Right. So you would never pull pour a hundred dead snails in there because you know exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So don't do that. <laughs> you know. Uh, and so yeah, I, I think that we call them nutrient batteries. You know, essentially what they're doing is, is during that time when they're starving, is they're eating themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. They like you know when you're on a diet, you essentially eat yourself, <laughs> uh, and then you still put that waste out into the water water right yeah. and that was what they were doing so I, I don't know I'm sure a lot of people like to sell packages of a hundred snails and a hundred crabs and a hundred whatever and but have you a know big tank you know for that think about how many you really need uh, uh, for your application uh, I, I'm not gonna say a hundred is a wrong number I just don't think that a hundred snails or if a hundred snails doesn't do your job that the problem was uh, that you needed 300 because it's probably not the case. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, also, a hard lesson is uh, many of the snails can't flip themselves over. So if they fall off that rock trying to seek the top, yeah. uh, you actually have to go in there and flip them over or they're going to die. Yeah, I'm worried about this in my 60-gallon tank in my office right now. I have three of the biggest Asterina snails I've ever, I've ever seen or laid eyes on. And they're literally like massive, the size of my palm of my hand. Uh, but heaven forbid one of those things flip over and I'm not around to flip it back over. Uh, oh, dude, it'd be drop, like dropping uh, a chunk of food this big. Like a there. massive chunk of food. Oh, he's, they're almost to the point where you could saute them up and eat them. <laughs> you it's probably if you're into snails. They are massive and they not allow, some of them are well known for not tipping themselves over. Uh, Trochus is one of the big ones uh, that are the Mexican turbos, I think, have a hard time also, but... Trochus snails are the ones that I, I found are the, e the most likely to be able to grab onto something and flip itself back You can over. see them when they're on their back one like this, flip, 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 and really throwing themselves around to get righted. Trochus snails seem to have mm. uh, be willing to eat more types of algae in my experience mm. as well. And they happen to breed in many tanks that oh, yeah. successfully be able to replicate themselves. Tons of tiny little guys. I think that message, though, that we've been given on that has made them scarce. They're kind of hard to find. I mean, oh. You often find uh, like little teeny little, ones little now. teeny trochus. Yeah, they're really hard to get them from breeders. And I don't know, like I know Algae Barn and ORA works at it, but sometimes they just stop breeding for whatever reason mm. and it's hard. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, I... I I know that many snails can't flip them over. Uh, for me, trochus snails are probably the best for that purpose. I, I, there's all kinds of them out there. You know, they probably have different reasons, but I primarily consider myself as a trochus and nasarius snail person mm -hmm. uh, for two different reasons. No yeah. urchins? Oh, so urchins are really good algae eaters. They eat a lot of coralline algae. They also hitchhike your, all of your things around they the tank. They push everything over <laughs> is my problem, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even those uh, really nice pin cushion, though, like blue ones that uh, um, uh, one of our guys breeds, Chad breeds mm -hmm. a bunch of ur pin cushion urchins. Really awesome. They're clean in the tank, but dang, I'm tired. I've had some. I've had a bunch of them before, and I'm I'm tired of seeing my you know hundred dollar stick frag that I just glued walking away from walking where I glued stuck it. To it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They tend to bulldoze stuff, and some of them yeah. you know cover themselves up with uh, coral and stuff and drag it all over the place. So. Uh, I will say urchins are really good if you are trying to beat something like, difficult. You have a problem, existing problem, try a few urchins in there. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Uh, hard at lessons is adding all of uh, the cleanup crew too early. Like yeah. you, you can't really add the fish too early because you can feed them a variety of ways. But the crabs, the snails, all that kind of stuff, even bacteria, potentially the copepods. If there isn't food for these things, they're going to die. That's why I put uh, the utilitarian fish uh, at the top of my cleanup crew rung now is because I can add them from like day one. As soon mm -hmm. as the tank cycle and everything's over and we're ready to go and I'm on my, uh, on my journey to turning on my lights and everything, I could have fish. I can already have them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that sort of goes back to what I said about losing a whole bunch of snails and crabs before is that was the first thing I added thinking that I'm going to get the leg up and ultimately fail. True. Uh, another uh, hard lesson, uh, I think for the community here, is actually the tank police have pros and cons. So the tank police are out there to help p protect the tanks and tell people to 
you know, the challenges of maintaining this fish mm -hmm. and don't play with this fish and that fish and the size of the tank. Well, that's helpful to some degree, but it wasn't, it was never that you couldn't have this mix of tangs. It's just how, what order do you put them in and when do you put them in, uh, in vast majority of cases. Uh, and then also size. like the size piece. Yeah, that size was one of the biggest, uh, anytime you heard about, anytime I heard about the tank police, it was mostly because somebody put a tang that will knowingly get large, all, all of them do, uh, in a small tank like 40 gallon breeder or 60 gallon cube. And then everybody comes out and you can't have that fish in there. The, the, the guy's this big. What do you mean I can't have him in there? Mm -hmm. uh, when he gets bigger, we go mm -hmm. take him out. We did that for the E-170. Yeah, two years from now. Especially easy if you can take the whole aquascape out in one piece. But yeah. uh, as long as you plan for that, I yeah. think you're all right. And you can catch them too, man. It's just a little different, a little, yeah. little hard eye. I think Nios just came up with a cool, uh, they have that little dome that the fish will go in. And then when you let it pull the magnet off, the dome flips up and brings it oh, to the not, ceiling. Oh, uh, I forget the company that does that, but it's not not Nios. It's oh. a different company. I forget the name. Oh, is it? Yeah. Right, my bad. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they have, uh, there's uh, you know different fish traps out there. So Tank Police, good, man. It was a step forward for us, but it was also holding us back in some areas because uh, ultimately I want a successful tank. I got a 40 breeder. Feel free, man. Throw the little tiny, find the smallest yellow tank you can find or, or uh, you know, or uh, tank, uh, yellow, a, yellow's uh, a little hard. like a bristle tooth, uh, white tail tank yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, find a small one. And then if you outgrow it, either by then you might want a bigger tank or, you know, trade it out to fish store. I mean, there's probably, there's cases like a, a 10 gallon tank. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. not so much. Yeah, there is definitely a like, limit somewhere. Yeah, uh, I think 40 breeders fine. Yeah, I mean. For little guys. I mean, it really depends on the size of the fish and yeah. your willingness to how often you want to trade them out. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, definitely there. You're so, uh, I don't know. That's cleanup crew. There's no, really a lot to it other than think about it more holistically. It's just not a bunch of snap, crabs and snails. Mm. It's tang gang for press, or tang gang for algae, utilitarian fish for many pests, copepods, microalgae, yeah. crab snails, detritus, yeah. sand sifters, cukes, stars, nasaria sails for sand. Bacteria for and biome for slimes. UV is supportive of the whole process. Uh, so what's next? 